Governor Scott Walker has been taking shots at President Obama recently, stoking speculation that he may run for the nation's highest office after his recent reelection. And a story on Politico.com today is the most solid evidence yet. With the headline, Scott Walker plots 2016 rollout. The article details active steps the governor is taking to launch a campaign next summer. With that in mind, we sent political reporter Jessica Arp to Iowa to look at the governor's chances. The people who are most likely to align with the Democratic Party. High above the Capitol in downtown Des Moines, a group of young Republicans have gathered over lunch for the monthly meeting of the Bull Moose Club to digest the results of this month's election. Does that matter in years that it's a presidential election? But that doesn't mean their minds aren't on the next one in 2016. Who would I vote for? It is 2014. We just got done with the Senate race. My gosh, it's a little presumptive. No, I, uh... You know, I don't know. But when you start asking him about potential candidates, Des Moines insurance broker Joe Stopulus is quick to drop a name. I'm a fan of uh, Scott Walker. Again, I went to Marquette in 04 when he was first running, so I've been following him for a while. He's not the only one in the Des Moines crowd. For me, absolutely, he's my favorite candidate right now. While the enthusiasm is clear, the Iowa Republicans are also quick to mention other names. New Jersey Governor Chris Christie, Texas Senator Ted Cruz, Florida Governor Jeb Bush, and Kentucky Senator Rand Paul. But Iowa GOP strategist Tim Albrecht says not to count the Wisconsin governor out. Governor Walker can do very well in Iowa. He's sort of a Midwestern folk hero right now because he was written off in three successive elections. Now, most people thought, well, does he even have a chance? And he won all three, and he won them decisively. Beyond his Wisconsin wins, Iowa Republicans are familiar with Walker's most controversial moves with Act 10 and collective bargaining. The things that he's done in Wisconsin, um, the way he's really fought the unions, which is very, very difficult, uh, that shows his ability to you know, make changes. But what one calls an asset, another may call a liability. As far as weaknesses, again, you know, you have the scandals, you have the problems related to, um, you know, his opposition to Medicaid expansion. And frankly, I mean, he survived a recall, but the fact that there was a vigorous recall effort says that he's not exactly a uh, person who builds bridges. In fact, he blows them up. Democratic Party Chair Scott Brennan questions Walker's fundraising ability and says he's much different than what Iowa Democrats will be looking for. I frankly would be surprised that he would ultimately be the Republican nominee. Albrecht disagrees, but says Walker would have to start building relationships in Iowa, setting up his campaign in the next six to nine months, calling those donors and meeting with voters. The old joke around here is, who are you going to support in the caucus? And they said, well, I like candidate X, but I've only met him twice. So, you know, voters take their responsibility here very seriously. While all presidential futures start in Iowa, Governor Walker, if he chooses to run, can say his truly did in the small northeast Iowa town of Plainfield. Plainfield is no political mecca. Less than 500 people call this no stoplight town home. Walker lived here for a few years as a child before moving to Delavan, Wisconsin. His father was the pastor at the Baptist Church. The Walker family lived in the house next door. I first was acquainted with the Walker family because I was president of the bank in, in Plainfield, Iowa. Don Scrake's son was also oh, Walker's classmate. And while those years were long ago, he has a clear memory of Walker's election as governor in 2010. The Walker name struck a bell with us, and so we researched a little bit, and sure enough, it was the Scott Walker that was in Blainfield when he was nine or ten years old. Scrag has been donating to Walker's Wisconsin campaigns and now thinks he'd be a viable contender in 2016. He certainly would have to get to the caucus and, and uh, do a lot of handshaking and door knocking maybe and so on and so forth. But uh, I still think there's a great storyline there. The traces of Scott Walker in Plainfield are now found at the local library. A bookish kid looking out from the pages of 1970s yearbooks. One no one may have envisioned could someday be inside the White House. In Iowa, Jessica Arp, WISC News 3. And Walker is currently in Florida, where he spoke yesterday on a panel with other re-elected Republican governors. He told the crowd at one point that, quote, any of us would be great choices in 2016.